Tuesday night in July, a few years back, either 61 or 62, when I was headlining at the Grand Ole Opry. All the gangs there, Hank and Willie and Loretta. So when it's time for my spot, I'm really up for it. In fact, I'm almost on fire. Until it gets to the last verse of my song, and I have to sing the word, darling. As in, I love you, darling. Well, the dar gets out okay, but when I hit the lift, my teeth shoot clean across the footlights and land right in the lap of Hank's mama. Yes, sir, right in her lap. Now, most of the folks there probably couldn't believe what they'd just seen. <laughs> and fortunately, this old gal's a real classy lady because she just scoops up those old false teeth and pops them right in her little black bag. And after the show, she comes backstage to my dressing room when no one was looking. She slips me back my dentures. And then she leans over real close and kind of draws, Boy, you be careful whose lap you go throwing that thing into because where I come from, most girls would take that for a proposal. In the Windy City, the temperature has dropped to minus three. There are heavy snowstorms on the way. It's going to be a white Christmas, folks, and a silent night. Ah, Mr. Davenport. We're glad that you could finally make it in. We tried to reach you on several occasions. Nine months. It's been that long. My father's been gone for nine months. box for your things. Thank you. I want to find something that works. <laughs> well? Yeah, if you're into the mermaid look. What do you want me to say? That you'll meet my client at three. Um, you will clean my house, do my Christmas shopping for me, and go to this stupid party for me tonight. Anything else? Oh, you know, Jack and I, we don't even get to spend any time together as it is. The last thing I want is to spend it with the people he's always with. Are you hungry? We just had lunch. Mm, I'm starving. How about this one? Huh? Look at this, Meg. I look like a punch set here. Well, it is a Christmas party. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't know. Mmm. The gold one. parents in the whole world. I love you. 
pub check. Five minutes, Mr. Davenport. All right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, please don't tell me I look fat. It's all over the dress. Oh, just crumbs. That does make me look fat. Why are you acting so pregnant? Meg? <gasps> you cannot say a word. Oh, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. Mom and Dad are going to be so excited. How far along are you? I'm far enough along for crackers. How did Jack take the news? Meg? You haven't told him yet. Go home, Jack. You have to pick up your wife. I need your opinion. Which of these would look best on Meg? Oh, I'm not good at this. Uh, these. Have you decided on the uh, Dallas assignment? I was going to talk to Meg about it first. What is this? This is real journalism. <laughs> I cleaned out my father's safety deposit box today. How sweet. He kept it all these ships. He'd be so proud of you. Especially if you went home and picked up your wife. I'll see you there. Jack, go. Don't say it. Hey, Santa Claus, you want to make me happy this year? Well, then listen to me, honey. Give me something that'll be of some use to me, like a, a five-pound box of money, mm-hmm. Now there's a little gift that's loaded with lots and lots of sentiment. See, whenever I get blue, Santa, I'll think of you. But at the same time, I have a little change to pay my rent. Now money isn't everything. There's just Well, you made it after all. Did we really have a choice? Oh, you're going to love it. The food is fantastic at lunch. <laughs> so, do you have any plans for Jack's 40th? That's right, your birthday's coming up. <laughs> it's the big 4-0. Thanks for reminding me. No, thanks. Hey, well, you know what they say. 40 is the new 30. <laughs> yeah, right. They also say that ostrich meat is the new beef. It's not so bad with bacon and cheese. <laughs> Birthday on Christmas Eve. Bomber. Oh, leave him alone. He still has a few good days. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> the new year would be so bright and sunny. Just bring me that little something that I've been speaking to you about. Yeah, you got it? I want a five pound box of money. Thank you. <laughs> it would be so. How long are we saying? And help me to meet both Will you drive? What I really That's not even funny, Jack. A, a five-pound box of tins. Now, how much could that weigh? Now, I don't want the whole money tree. 
well, what good would that whole thing be for me? You know what I'm saying? Now, you can keep the branches, you can keep the trunk and the roots. Because all I really want is a little bit of fruit. So if you want to be sure that I'll be your, your little honey, honey bunny, yeah. You just try me. There's the slave driver himself. I want a five pound. Give it a rest, man. That's enough. No, 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 make it a ten pound. If I'm gonna beg, I'm gonna beg real, real, real big Cause you know folks move, they change their address And I may not even see you next year Just give me the money, Santa Claus, come on now Give me the money It's been a while since you've hit on the story I think this Charlotte Hampton thing could be it All right Just let one of the young guys do it You need it, Jack Looks like it's time to go. Thank you for a wonderful party, Mr. Hunt. I have to commend you, Meg. Anyone that allows her husband to work as much as you Deserves do... Deserves an exceedingly large bonus, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> I know it's a Christmas assignment, Jack. But I have to know first thing Monday morning. I wouldn't have to leave until Christmas Eve. Oh, that's great, Jack. It's your birthday. You really think I want this story? Yes, I do. I covered bigger stories right out of college. It's striking out for months. You heard, Hunt. I need this one. What about what I need? What we need? I will take time off after Christmas. Do you know that even when you're here... What? I feel alone. Then come with me to Dallas. We've already made plans with the family. They are coming tomorrow! Your family? Our family. It has never been any other way. I didn't mean that. What would you like me to tell them? Be creative, Meg. You always think of something. I don't want to be creative anymore. Stuck, Jack. What do you want to do? I don't know. Maybe we just need some space. for Dallas. I'm leaving, Meg. A call from Dallas.
Welcome to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. For your safety and security, keep your baggage with you at all times. Please do not leave any bags unattended. Thank you. Hey, Meg, it's me. I thought you should know I won't be staying in Dallas. I'm on my way to Clearwater for a couple of days. Can you pick up the phone? I'm the one that's stuck, Meg. I really need to find some answers. I'd love you to pick up the phone. Good morning. This here is Randy Rogers of KOWS. That's cows for all you visiting city folks, the station that puts the K in country. You ain't getting that old, are you, fella? Excuse me. Yes, sir. You ever seen this place? Yeah. Yes, sir. If you got an arm strong enough, you could just about throw a rock and hit it from here. If you go to the light, hang a left. Second stop sign, turn to the right. Can't miss it. Appreciate it. You're welcome, sir. Have a good day. Mm. Hey, Christmas Day. Well, I'll be dope. I said, is there a service tonight? No, we don't need the linen service. We do our own town. Actually, I was wondering if I could talk to someone in charge. Uh, hold on. Sarah, can you hold it down a minute? What were you saying? Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. It seems like you're getting ready for a service tonight. No, no, not tonight. Christmas Eve. Special service. You plan on coming? I'll think about it. It's a good thing God didn't think about it. He did it. He came. Now that's something to think about. Thanks. You're welcome. Haven't been in church for a while. Jack Davenport. How can we help you? Um, I'm here because of this. Someone sent it to my father. I was wondering if someone could give me some more information about this. Perhaps the Reverend? Oh, I'm so sorry. He's not in at the moment. You know, this looks very similar to the Reverend Krause's old photos. Quite a photographer. Well, maybe I'll catch him later on. It'd be quite difficult, I'm afraid. The Reverend Krause passed on. It's been uh, quite a while. I see. You know, if you go back out to the town square, you'll find Kirby's Cafe. Some of the Reverend Krause's old photographs are on display there. Thanks for your help. Anytime.
Can I give you a hand with that? Yeah, thank you. Here? Amazing. What can you tell me about it? I can tell you it is made of wood. <laughs> I am joy to maintenance here. You are new in town. Just visiting. Uh, from where? Chicago. Ooh, you have come a long way. <laughs> uh, good to meet you. Hey, got company. Uh, yeah, this is Mr. Um, uh, Jack. Uh, yeah. Hey, Jack, I'm Michael. Yeah, from Chicago. Thank you for your help, Jack. So, Chicago, huh? Yeah. You a musician? Oh, I, I play at the church sometimes. Any good? Well, I don't like to brag, you know, but uh, my kids tell me I'm awesome. <laughs> so what about you? What uh, line of work are you in? I'm a journalist. Journalist, okay. Let me guess. Uh, I bet you're doing a story on our nativity. No, actually, I'm doing a story in Dallas. In Dallas? Well, what in the world are you doing in Clearwater? Just trying to get some information at the county clerk's office in the morning. Okay. Well, hey, if you're going to be in town tonight, you need to come out to uh, Stanford's barn. We got our big annual Christmas celebration. Sure love to have you. Thanks. All right. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Hi, Meg. It's me. I was hoping to catch you. All right. I'll try again later. Bye. Were any of these taken by the Reverend Cross? Pretty much anyone with the church in it, but that's about all I can tell you. So, anything in the way of food? Do you have any lunch specials? Yeah, but uh, they're not that special, so I'd go with breakfast if I were you. Play it safe. Just wheat toast with the coffee. Where are you headed? Here. <laughs> so, uh, what do you do for fun around here? That all depends, I guess. What kind of fun are you looking for? <clears throat> you want excitement? We got, uh, oh, goodness, square dances, flea markets, cow tipping. <laughs> this is the place to be, Shug. Could I get a refill over here? Of course, I don't know, you don't strike me as the cow tipping kind. Well, aren't you perceptive? <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of my many talents. I thought you could use a little chair. Hey. So, tell me, what kind of work do you do? I'm a journalist. What newspaper? It's not really a newspaper, it's more of a magazine. Are you looking for stories? Because we got lots of stories, don't we, Naomi? That's right. Hey, Cindy. What you gonna have today? Uh, nothing for me. I'm here on official business for the newspaper. Seems like Sunday's the only time I can catch Jimmy. There's somebody else here you might like to meet. A real live big city reporter. Anything I would have read? Well, a few months back I wrote an article on war children. The ones in Liberia? Yeah, that was mine. You wrote that? Yep. Ain't that special? Don't pay any attention to him. That was a pretty powerful piece. Pick you up at eight, Miss Congeniality. I'll be ready, Jimmy James. And don't be late. Ah, Naomi Williams. It's a pleasure to meet you. Jack Davenport. Naomi, if you want to talk to Jimmy, you better hurry up and catch him. Oh, right. Uh, listen, anything you need, anything, right there down there at the corner, Town Square. All right? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Let me get you change. You can keep it. It's been charming, Cindy. Well, take care of my man. Oh, is there any place nearby where I could get a room? Only one. Uh, just turn around the other way and go down the road about a mile and some. It's a Venice place. You can't miss it. It's not fancy, but the rooms are clean. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. You too. 
I need to see your driver's license and the paperwork on this car. What exactly did I do wrong? Made an illegal U-turn. I didn't see a sign. And it's run a little differently here in Clearwater Sun. Now you can mail this in, or they'll be happy to take your money at the county courthouse. Opens in the morning at 8 a.m. You drive real careful now, you hear? Hello, uh, I'd like a room. And you're in luck, because we have a room with a king-size bed, or two full-size beds if that's more comfortable. We also have a room with a double bed and a fold-out couch. Two fulls will be fine. All right. Here is your room, number 145. On the left here, you'll find the ice machine. And your listing of the television channels. We do not have cable or satellite. A discount coupon for Stottlemyers. They have a wonderful selection for Christmas. I see you've already picked up a fly out of Christmas Cal event this evening. Directions down here at the bottom. But now here is your street map of Clearwater so you won't get lost. Now how will you be paying? Cash or check. We don't take credit cards. <laughs> and you know, they're married. I mean, everybody has a problem or two every now and then, but we can't interfere. It wouldn't do an ounce of good. I just hope you get some time alone with Jack. Man. That's all. They're adults. I just want the best for our Megan. So, we're agreed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Where is it? Yeah. Where's that handsome husband of yours, Megan? Did he call? Then Jack answered. Please. Jack's not here. What kind of assignment is Jack away on this time, sweetheart? Oh, something about a, a homeless woman in Texas inheriting millions. He'll be back Christmas Day. So, Angel, what did Jack say? You think my food isn't yucky? Mm -hmm. You still haven't told him. to the city of Nazareth. Hark, I hear him coming. Excuse me, sir, we need to be on stage. Okay. <laughs> uh, did you find the church all right? Uh, yeah, thanks. Miles Stanford. People just call me judge. Come on, Mary, we need to find a warm place to stay for the night. Not a show you would see in that big city of yours. <laughs> great joy which will be unto all people. Today in the town of David a That's Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Oh, Thank these children for this wonderful show tonight. And Sarah, you've outdone yourself this time. So you stand up and let us thank you too.
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and then heaven and heaven and nature sing. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echo back their joy. Car started. It was a great evening. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Looks like our bumpy Texas roads have had the best of your tires there. Oh. Two tires, huh? What? What are the odds? Huh. Guess I'll call AAA. I don't think there is one here in Clearwater. Well, I will uh, drive you, then we can I'll take uh, care of it, John. It's no problem. It's all right. Give us a chance to get to know each other. Well, then I'll uh, help you with your tires in the morning. Thanks. Uh, you sure you don't mind? I'm positive. Come on. Good night. Good night. This is really nice of you. No, that's not every day I got to talk to a Chicago reporter. <laughs> You're not going to be with your family for the holidays? I'll be home Christmas night. What about you? No, uh, none of my kids live here anymore. They'll come home and visit before Christmas. What about you? Children? Just Meg and me. It's my wife. Mm. Works for us. I don't see. You lived here long? How am I? So you knew Reverend Krause? No, oh, everybody knew the Reverend. He was a good man. Don't you say that you're doing a story on the Reverend? No, it's more of a personal thing. I see. Can we stop a minute? Sure. It's really something at night. I'd say you're living at the pride and joy of this town. Where's it from? Right here. Really? Yeah. It was hand carved by a man named Ottleman. Must have cost a pretty penny. <laughs> Didn't even cost an ugly penny. It was given to the church. Generous gift. And Ottleman was a proud man. But he loved to drink. One night he got so drunk, wrecked his car with his pregnant wife, and Alleman survived, and she didn't. Tragic. I figure he worked 10 years carving this nativity scene. It's quite a story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I better get you back. No, you know, I think I'll walk. I need to work off some of this pie. Jack, it's been good to meet you. Thanks, Judge. Good night. Good night. Hello. Hey. Hey. Did your parents make it in all right? Yeah, everybody's fine. So how was your flight? It was fine. All right, well, I'll call you tomorrow, I guess. 
Okay. Bye. I don't want him to come home for the wrong reasons. Well, good morning to all you good people out there in Clearwater. To all you heathens, be advised you have just 39 shopping hours left before Christmas. You know, folks, our little culture crusade here on Cal seems to have stirred up a veritable frog's nest among the West Texas pond life. Now here's just a sample email sent in by J.J. Driscoll of Death Smith County. Dear Randy, are you nuts? Your hour of culture is driving my whole family insane. Well, Jimmy Driscoll, clearly you have forgotten the old saying your grandma tried to beat into you. Those who pursue mediocrity are never disappointed. Uh, how can I help you, sir? Now that's a lovely sweater. <laughs> Is this where the county keeps its vital records? It surely is. Anna, what kind of records would you be looking for today? Birth records. Now, these are yours, correct? Because I can't permit you to look up someone else's records. They're mine. Okay, it'll cost you five dollars. And uh, date of birth? December 24th, 1963. Really? Oh, well, happy 40th and Merry Christmas almost. This might take me a few minutes, so don't you go anywhere. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is there a problem? I can't give you any information. The records are sealed, hon. Well, that's my personal information. How can that be sealed? In sealed cases such as yours, uh, you'll need a written request from a birth parent as well as an adoptive parent to get the information that you're requesting. That's not possible. <sighs> uh, how about if we exchange Christmas presents? I get a look at that file and you get a new sweater. No, no, I, uh, I can't accept that. With a court order, you'd be able to see the file, though. That'd have to go through Judge Stanford. Judge Stanford? I really am sorry. It's all right. I'll come back later. Merry Christmas. Is everything okay? It just doesn't seem fair. What doesn't seem fair? These sealed adoption cases. These cases aren't really sealed. Certain folks can see them, just not the people who want to. Mm. Don't you think people should be able to know about their own life? I understand. But we can't forget the promises of privacy we made to the people who gave up the child. You should have seen his face. I know you feel bad. But you did the right thing. Hmm. Oh, it's just something I'm working on. So, what's the deal with the sheriff? Jimmy James? Um, you know, he's not that bad once you get to know him. Just a little set in his ways, I guess. So how'd you get to know him? Well, he gave me a speeding ticket. We argued, I cried, he asked me out to dinner. 
Yeah, that's my Jimmy James. Listen, I better make my rounds. Sure. You come back for seconds? I thought I'd get a refill. I have a seat. Did you know Reverend Krause? Uh, I knew his boys. <laughs> Why, did you know him? Nope. That's one of his right there. Is that the Reverend? Yeah, that's him. He was a good man. Lived what he preached. He's my most disgruntled customer. <laughs> Jeez, Jimmy James. From now on, you only get in decaf. Hey, you know what? I think that before Reverend Krause came to Clearwater, he was a photographer for one of those big city newspapers. Any family left in town? You now his uh, wife passed after him. Are there any pictures of Ottoman? Ottoman? Yeah, the woodcarver that donated the nativity. Oh, I see it. That's the day that the uh, nativity was donated to the church right there. Listen, why don't you go see Naomi? I'm sure the newspaper's got lots of information on that kind of stuff. You ready to get your car, Mr. Davenport? Oh, great. Thanks, Cindy. Sorry you had to go to all this trouble. There's no trouble. The judge asked me to pick up a tire on the way out. That was kind. Uh, now, what are you doing working so hard? I'm not working. He's doing all the work. <laughs> Just the man I was looking for. I'll get some fixed. Yeah. Thank you. I must get back to the church. So, what do I owe you for parts and labor? Ah, uh, not a thing. I appreciate your hospitality. It's all right. I didn't know that you were the judge. <laughs> that I am. Uh... There's something I wanted to talk to you about, if you don't mind. As long as you don't quote me. Here, let me get the door for you. All right. Uh, I went to the courthouse this morning to get a copy of my birth certificate. I was told I need a court order because my adoption records are sealed. Thought maybe you could help me out. No woman one time she'd decide to look for. Baby girl she gave up at birth, sealed adoption. Woman searched for five years. She, she begged and pleaded with, for information with anybody. Finally, she got the adoptive parent's name from someone. Called the family. Her baby girl been dead for three years. Broke her heart. Broke her heart all over again. See, she came to me first. I knew the child was dead, but I couldn't tell her. The law forbids it. She would have been better off never knowing anything about it. Judge, I need to know. Son, I see your point. I might even agree with you. I just can't help. Hot off the wire this morning, an update on Miss Charlotte Hampton, who has promised to give away all her newfound money on Christmas morning. Many legal experts expect a flood of lawsuits. Listen, I need to get that Hampton file overnighted to my hotel. I'm not leaving for Dallas for a couple more days. Okay. No, I'm fine, Jen. It's just fine. Well. After that sad little reflection on human avarice, here's a sweet little Christmas ditty to hey, soothe us back. It's really nice Spirit to see you again, place. Mr. Davenport. Jack. Let me turn this down. That Charlotte Hampton story is huge, but I hear that she's got a sister who's going to try to sue her even before she gets the money. How'd you know that? <laughs> I've got my sources. I decided to take you up on your offer. Oh, sure, anything. Name it. I'm looking for information on the Reverend Krauss or anything concerning his church around December 1963. Oh, you came to the right place. Come on. Yeah, well, we have a pretty extensive research library. And over here, we have um, our microfiche that dates back to about 1920. Let's start with the Reverend Krauss in the 60s. Ooh, it's been a long time since I've used one of these. Here you go. Okay. 
Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at yeah. this. Baby Jesus returns. The Baby Jesus, part of a hand carved set donated in 1955 by a local woodworker, was taken from the church sometime last Sunday. The Reverend Krauss woke to find the wooden Baby Jesus back in the manger. Why would somebody steal it one day and return it the next? I don't know. Maybe a rival church across town. <laughs> All right, let's go to December 1955. Okay. Look at this. A gift to my dear friend, Reverend Krauss, and in loving memory of my wife. Alman's wife died in a fatal car accident in 1945. What do you know about Alman? Well, that's a little bit before my time, but obviously he was close to Krauss, right? I wonder if he's still alive. Hmm. I'll go online and check the obits. And the gift was warmly received by most of the congregation, yet some of the individuals were troubled by the woodworker's depiction of the baby Jesus, carved within the chest of the Christ child. Ottoman chose to place a simple wooden scarlet cross. There is no current listing of Ottoman in the whole state of Texas, but I did find this phone book from 1955, and it says it has an Ottoman at 1729 Sullivan Lane. I know exactly where that is. He's not living there now. Well, maybe we can find something out. All right. Let's give it a try. Okay, great. The car's out back. Hello, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm here doing some research on Clearwater. Journalist? Yeah, I'd like to find out about someone who used to live in this house. Come on. How long have you lived here? I guess about eight years now. Now it's just Kylie and me, and she's in school. I'm pretty sure that a man named Ottleman lived here with his family sometime in the late 50s, early 60s. Ottleman? I don't know. He, he was a woodworker. You know? It was all here when we moved in. I, I can't believe somebody would leave this behind. This is Kylie's room. She just turned 10. This was here when you moved in? It surely was. My little girl, she just loves it. Ottoman had a daughter. I'm glad you stopped by. I found this today. The Reverend Krauss gave it to me years ago. Your picture reminded me. What did he say when he gave it to you? I don't remember. It's really important. He gave us so many things. Sounds like he was a very generous man. Sincere, dedicated. Oh, and he could preach like this. Um, the baby Jesus was born with love in his eyes and the cross in his heart. And he was, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Sarah, you keep that up and you're going to put me out of a job. Oh, no, I, I was telling them about the Reverend Cross. Well, you go right ahead. Don't let me interrupt. No, I, I think I'm through. <laughs> Besides, they didn't come to hear me preach. They came looking for you. Well, I was just on my way out. Uh, can you walk with me? Sure. Oh, great. So what can I do for you today? I was hoping you could answer a few questions. You'll know who to give it to. I remember now, that's what he said. You'll know who to give it to. Since you have the other one, I expect that'd be you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I've only been here about three years now, so... I'm sorry, Jack. I just... I don't know anything about these pictures. This place does have quite a history beyond me, though. And what about the Scarlet Cross? Oh, the one in the manger? Yeah. It's missing. Missing? Yeah. Come here, I'll show you. That's where it used to be. It's really interesting. They say that the woodcarver wasn't a believer when he first started the nativity. And then when he carved the face of the Messiah, something happened. People say his life really changed. And the Scarlet Cross? Where is it now? Well, that's a good question. Nobody really seems to know. Well, hey, why don't you uh, come to the house? For dinner tonight, family and I. And Naomi, we'd sure love to have you too. Well, oh, thanks, but I already have plans. I gotta get back to the office. Okay, well, hey, let me, uh, let me give you my phone number and we'll eat about 6.30. Sounds great. All right. I really appreciate this, Naomi. Oh, no problem. I'll try to pull some more articles on Kraus. Uh-oh, looks like Jimmy nailed somebody again. Hey there, Naomi. Is there a problem, Jimmy? What are you doing? I'm removing an illegally parked vehicle from the premises. Illegally parked? It's been parked for three hours and 22 minutes in a two-hour parking zone. <laughs> You're kidding, right? I'm going to tow it. Well, I'm here now. I'll move it. No, I'm moving it. Come on, Jimmy, please. You know, this isn't funny anymore, Sheriff. Oh, my turf now. You play by my rules. Get out of my way. What are you doing? You know, this is very small town of you, Sheriff. Would you like to get in the car? Jimmy! You'll get all this back when you're released. Jimmy, this is crazy. Your phone call? Call Reverend Curtis. Just do it. Jimmy, why are you doing this? You know it wasn't that big of a deal. Naomi, now you can leave. I'll be back. <clears throat> uh, yes, is the Reverend Curtis there, please? Hold on, just a second. Telephone. Oh, thanks. Hello? Reverend, it's Jack Davenport. Hey, Jack? What's going on? Jimmy's got me here in the county jail. I've got a 5.30 meeting, but I'll be there. Thank you very much. Take off your jacket. And your watch. Country fans is why country will always be our first and only true love here in Clearwater. Hey, Meg. Look what you found. 
Remember that? Hey, remember father? I am a pretty good listener. I don't know that. When Mom told you that she was pregnant? Mm -hmm. oh, what's through your head? <sighs> Lots of things. That day, when I came home from work, your mother was just waiting to tell me <laughs> that I was going to be a father. She was. But I got to tell you, I was totally unprepared. I didn't know what to say. I was speechless. Maybe even a little scared. But very, very happy. Hey, listen to me, sweetheart. Jack's gonna make a great father. Hi, we go way back. Now, Reverend. Jimmy, why in the world did you throw him in jail? I didn't throw him in jail. He's just cooling off. Get the keys and let's get him out of there. Reverend, I can't do that. Fine. Give me the keys and I'll get him out. It ain't locked. Jim, you wear me out. I'm afraid I won't be very good company tonight. And it's nothing that a good home cook meal won't fix. Hey, Deb, we're home. Hey, honey. Hey, we did go. Hey, Jack. Hi. It's good to see you tonight. Thank you. I hope you like pot rose. Sounds perfect. Come on mm. in. Smells great. Yeah, sure good. Does. I thought you guys might be hungry by now. Yeah. The kids were. They've already eaten and gone to bed, so. Oh, okay. Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the many gifts that you've given us. And we ask you to keep our hearts open to receive all that you have for us. Thank you for this wonderful meal, uh, for this great company. And uh, thank you that my very obedient children are asleep in their beds. Amen. You didn't even <laughs> open your eyes. Chris, what have you done? With you, Grace. <laughs> Come here. Here you go, Jack. Hey. How can I say no to this? Easy. <laughs> no. You know the rules, honey. Why were you in jail? Oh, Grace. Grace. I broke some rules. I'm so sorry. And you're going to be sorry, too, little girl. If you don't get to bed right now. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> when did you adopt Grace? Uh, she was about six months old when we got her. Why'd they give her up? 
You know, that's something we don't know. You mean it was a closed adoption? No, actually, Grace was abandoned. Is that why you're here, Jack? I don't really know. All my life, I've told other people's stories. And I'm going to be 40 on Christmas Eve. This time, I'd like to know my own. Today, I'm featuring the music of Vivaldi and Chopin. That's chopping to some of you folks. And of course, the one and only Ludwig van Beethoven. Good morning. I just wanted to remind you, you can pick up your car anytime. I suppose you'll be leaving town today. You know something I don't? Hey, Jimmy James, your ex are getting called. I told you not to call me at work, Cindy. Vanessa? I'm in the back. You're sure getting an early start today. <laughs> Girl, that is you. You like it? Yes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what? I heard you've been hanging out with that big time reporter. Well, okay, who's been talking? Cindy. Uh, yeah, I figured. You know, he came in here the other day and I wanted to help him. I really did, but you know, there's only so much you can do mm -hmm. and keep your job. Yeah. You know, he's been having a hard time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to help him find some of that information he was looking for. I couldn't. No, you couldn't. Uh, Naomi, my printer out front is running out of paper, so could you go in the supply closet and get me some? Now, uh, here's the key to supply closet, and uh, don't get it confused with this one, which unlocks this filing cabinet. Okay. I'm gonna be out front. Thank you. Vanessa. It's not here. Are you sure? Yes. Did you do something with it? No. I, no. I locked that file up myself. Okay, well, who else has a key? Just me and the judge. Vanessa? Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sheriff. What's going on? Nothing. Where's Naomi? I saw her come in. I don't see her. Merry Christmas. Back at ya. a little visit to our friend Vanessa. Your birth certificate? Yeah. It's gone. What? Only two people have the key, Vanessa and the judge. And Vanessa didn't take it. Nothing, Jimmy. Is it?
Jimmy James. He hadn't done anything. He's just looking for answers is all. Excuse me. I got a lot of important things to do, so unless you're placing me under arrest... I got your coffee, Jimmy James. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Have a seat, Hansel. What are you hiding? What? You took my birth certificate. It may not be legal for me to see those records without a court order, but it's my life. I won't leave until I find out. You come with me. Carmen Nottleman, Wood Carver's daughter, got pregnant. She hid it till almost the very end. When her daddy found out, of course, he got mad, then he got drunk. Hadn't had a drink in years. He and Carmen had a wreck. A second time? Second time, same mistake. First time was with his wife when she was pregnant with Carmen. He killed them both. Why do people do what they swear they'll never do? I had to step in, put the baby up for adoption. This time, Alderman went to prison. Carmen Alderman was your mama. And those sealed records were meant to protect you. And my father? Only Carmen. And why send the photo? That was Cross's doing. Now I know what he meant when he said it's in God's hand. I'm sorry. Senator, there's nothing here for you. Happy birthday, Jack. All right, all right, I'll keep it down. Hey, Jack. Hey, uh, listen, I knew you were going to be leaving early tomorrow, and uh, Grace made you a little something. These are, let's see, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, uh, Going Away Cookies. Thanks. Hey, uh, you got a minute? Listen, I thought a lot about what you said last night. Sounds crazy now, but uh, right before we adopted Grace, Deborah and I panicked. I mean, we really freaked out. We were so afraid that we wouldn't be able to love her as much as we did Josh and Robert. But then the first time we held her in our arms and looked down at her tiny face, it was nothing short of miraculous. It was like our hearts just exploded with love, and we knew, somehow, we just knew that she was our daughter, a gift from God. And you're right. I mean, she's never going to know why she was abandoned. Neither will we. But what she will know is that she has a family that loves her like crazy. And most important... She'll know that, just like us, she has a heavenly father who loves her even more than we do. Do you really believe that? You know, I don't have all the answers. Boy, I sure don't have it all figured out. But yeah, I believe with all my heart, God loves us. 
he came. Well, hey, <laughs> you enjoy those multi-purpose cookies of yours. <laughs> Thank you. Listen, if you need to talk, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Yeah. No room for you at the inn. Here, here, we must get you warm. Come. Do not have much uh, coffee. You will soon be going back to your family for the holidays. Me too. It's good. You think that a man can change? I hope so. Let him get going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, Jack. You came looking for Carmen. What you get is me. She was my whole life. And now, meeting you, it is the answer to all my prayers. She would have wanted you to have this. 
what happened the night I was born. Papa. Has my baby come? No, Carmen. I'm so sorry. so quickly. Every year at this time, we gather around this beautiful nativity as friends and as family and as a community, and we remember who we are, what we have, and even what we've lost. Let us remember that this scene represents so much more than just a touching story or a nostalgic holiday fairy tale. It is, in fact, a reminder of the most amazing reality, that God came and God spoke. Peace on earth, God is with us, and the God who spoke still speaks, and the God who came still comes.
Now aren't you glad I made you come? This is the true miracle Darling, of Christmas. I'd come anyway. That as we stand here tonight in our real world, with our real lives full of problems and questions, past hurts and future hopes, God is with us. God is with us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This belongs to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Charlotte Hampton? He gave me the Charlotte Hampton story? It's so nice to meet you, Joe. Hello. We have news for you. You're going to be a great grandfather. This is Cows broadcasting to you live from the Christmas service in front of the oldest church in Clearwater. It's 1201 Christmas morning. All night, the lines have been open and requests have been piling in. First up is Marlon Davis in the county jail who is doing 10 for armed robbery. Marlon wants Jim Reeves to put your sweet lips a little closer to the phone. Well, I don't think so, Marlon. What you need is some soul surgery. Just you open up your heart and get...